What's up everybody, Deutschbeg here, and today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own Rust legacy server within just a couple minutes. So uh, first things first, uh, go to the link in the description to download Steam CMD. It'll give you a nice little uh, zip file like this, and it'll have the Steam CMD executable inside. For simplicity, we're going to uh, open up our C drive, and we're just going to do everything on the root of C. So you want to start off by making a uh, folder for the Steam uh, CMD executable. And then just drag and drop that in there, or extract it, whatever your preferred method is. And uh, we'll run the Steam CMD. Uh, after it grabs a bunch of files, which you'll see populating in that directory, it's going to give you the Steam prompt. And what we can do there is log in. And we're just going to log in as anonymous. There's no reason to use your actual Steam account for this. And then uh, once that logs us in, we need to specify the uh, directory in which we want to install the Rust server. So we are going to force install in uh, the specified directory, which is going to be C and Rust underscore server. And now that we've specified where we want it, we actually need to grab the uh, files in, in order to run the server. So we'll just type this in. Uh, we've got um, app update, which is basically just telling it to grab the files. The app ID, which is the 258550, uh, specifying beta. I'm assuming just because the game was, or technically still is in beta. Uh, we want the legacy version, not the latest build. And we want to validate the files. So now this portion here will probably take a little bit longer than five minutes. So I'm gonna let it do its thing. We'll come back in a little bit and we'll complete the setup. All right, so we're just about uh, finished up downloading here. So as soon as this finishes, we'll be able to uh, close out of Steam CMD because we are done with it. And we're gonna head over to the uh, C drive and uh, that go to that Rust directory that we had specified. So uh, in here, there's gonna be a bunch of different files, but the main one we're concerned with right now is rustserver.exe. If you double click that, it's gonna show uh, a little configuration window here like you're playing the game, but you can just hit play, and this is going to launch your server. Um, you can minimize the big window in the background because we don't actually need that. And here you can see that uh, the server has started, and it's going to be playing on 28015. That's a port it's going to be playing on. So now we need to connect to our uh, server. And what we're going to need is the IP address of that server. So from whatever machine you're running your server on, you need to open up a command prompt and do an IP config and that will give you your IPv4 address. So what we'll do then is we'll go into Steam and we will launch. Make sure you have the uh, legacy version of Rust or this won't work. So let's go ahead and launch Rust. Sure, that is fine. Try and move this out of the way so I can show you the console window. So now, uh, in-game, you can press F1, and we need to type in net.connect, the IP address, colon, and then the port number that the server is listening on, which is going to be 28015 by default. We'll hit enter, and you'll see here that it is actually loading our Rust game. And over here, you'll be able to see in the server console that I have connected to the server. Let's press F1 to get rid of that ugly little window there. And here we are. We can do everything that we would you know, do on a public Rust server, all with the, uh, within the comfort of our own home, where no one can kill us. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And uh, stay tuned for more Rust uh, server tutorials. Uh, my next one will probably be how to actually admin the server that you've just created. But for now, you have this lovely working uh, private server. So remember to comment, rate, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.